What's up guys? It's Erica from Rainbow Factory and today we're going to be painting this kit. It's called the Fab Flamingo and it is at rainbowfactory.com. You can pick up the kit there and it has everything you need to make this piece of artwork. This kit is awesome for all ages. My 12 year old loves to paint this one and I had a lot of fun painting it too. So grab the kit, it has everything you need to get started, and I'm about to show you step by step how to achieve this painting. It's gonna be fun, let's get started. Okay, so with your kit, you will get these paint colors. You'll get a couple of brushes, a small one and a medium one. And you'll get a little card, um, that shows you what the painting will look like at the end. You'll get a piece of graphite paper for tracing, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. You'll also get your tracer and a canvas or um, paper, depending on which you choose. So I'm just gonna move this stuff out of the way for a second. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is trace our image onto our canvas. So you'll take your tracing paper, <laughs> sorry, I have a fan going pretty strongly above me, so everything's blowing away. Um, we're gonna just trace it, here we go. We're gonna put the tracing paper with the dark side down, okay, that's the side with the graphite on it, just right on top of our canvas or our paper, okay? And then we're gonna line up our paper. I'm just kind of feeling where the edges of my canvas are. Okay. And you can just use a pencil or a pen or uh, the, even the back side of your paintbrush to just gently trace over the drawing. Now, sometimes it helps, especially if it is a more complicated drawing, to get someone to hold it down for you as you go, or you can tape it down. Sometimes it's good to tape down one edge so that as you're going, with the more, I mean, this one's pretty easy, but with the more complicated ones, you can kind of lift it up and make sure that you didn't miss any parts. It's a good idea when you're tracing to go in sections. So you're like, okay, I'm gonna do the tree first and then the ocean lines and then the, tr the uh, flamingo all at once so that you don't kind of get distracted from one part and then you'll come back and be like, oh my gosh, where did I um, trace? See, I can't remember if I traced right here. So I'm just gonna lift it up. Yep, looks good. Tracing is awesome practice for all ages who are trying to learn how to draw better. It really helps with muscle memory. And this tracing paper is actually reusable. So you can use it over and over again, so don't throw it away. Okay, so we have our image traced just like that, super easy. and we can begin. The only other thing you're gonna need, well, you'll need a pencil to trace with unless you're using the back end of your paintbrush, and you'll need a palette. I like to just use uh, just regular old paper plates, and you need um, water, which I haven't even gotten yet. Let me go grab it. There we go. We have our water. Okay, so we have our water cup, our palette, our paints, 
and our brushes and we're ready to go. I suggest with this painting to start with the sky. So we're just going to grab, instead of using that cup, I'm going to use it straight from the tube. Because I'm going to mail those cups off later <laughs> with a kit. So we're just going to grab a little bit of our blue. And I'm going to have to move those cups because I keep grabbing them. And a little bit of our white. And we're going to mix those together to come up with a really pretty sky blue. It doesn't take a lot of blue to tint white. So we're just going to drag just a little bit of blue in there. And I like that color. I think that's nice. So with this sky, we're going to use our medium brush and it's I find that it's easiest to outline the tree first and then we'll outline the ocean line the horizon line right here that's called the horizon line, where the ocean or land meets the sky. That's our horizon line. Okay, I'm going to just fill in this little area with the corner of my brush, or if it's a round brush, just the tip of it. Okay, now I have everything outlined, and as you'll see, the paint is a little bit bumpy on the edge here. That's why I like to do my outlining first, because when I fill it in, it'll be easy to smooth out those bumps. And anytime I'm working on sky or um, the ground or even a body of water, I like to move back and forth in a horizontal direction. That's just my style. Now, think about Van Gogh, right? Look at, think about his skies. His were swirly and curly and wavy and beautiful. So, just because I do it this way doesn't mean you have to. Have fun with it. You're the artist. There we go. Now, while our paint is wet, Throughout this process, as always, I'm going to show you kind of the basic way of doing things, and then I'll show you some little tricks on how to take it even a step further. And that's, of course, always an option, never mandatory. Just depends on your age, skill level, and how much time you have. <laughs> that's always something to take into account. So with the sky, a fun little thing to do is while our paint is still wet, to take a little bit of our water and maybe some white, some lighter, add some more white to your mix so it's lighter than the color you have down there now. Add a little bit of water to it and just kind of put some pretty streaks in there just to give it a little bit of personality we want sky with personality right again totally optional you see how i'm not being too fussy around these lines because i know i'm going to go over this and it's going to cover up where i've kind of gone out of the lines so i'm not too worried about it okay so we're pretty much done with our sky now we are going to go straight into our ocean. So we're gonna grab, I keep grabbing these cups. Stop that, Erica. Okay, I'm gonna grab the kind of teal or aqua color that the kit comes with. Any old aqua will do. And we're basically going to do the same thing that we did with the sky in the horizontal um, direction. I just cleaned out my brush just a little bit. And 
Now, don't go all the way down quite yet. We are going to add a little gradient. You'll notice there's a gradient here uh, of color in the ocean, so we're gonna add that as we go. So don't get too far down there, maybe about a third of the way. My paint is pretty thick, so I'm just adding a little touch of water as I go using the corner of my brush around those edges. Now, if you get real nervous about using your medium brush around those edges, grab your little brush. Some people prefer to look with, work with smaller brushes and that's totally fine. All right. So we have the top, I would say, third portion of our ocean covered with our aqua color. Now I'm going to grab a little bit of that blue that we had before and mix it with our aqua. And let's just lightly add a little streaking over top of that. Again, mixing a little of the blue and a little of the aqua. Because you know, the ocean's not all one color. When we look at it, it's a little bit of blue, a little bit of aqua, a little bit of green even, just depending on the lighting time of day. All right, that looks good. So I'm going to take that gradient, and by gradient, I just mean that it's changing colors as it goes. As it moves down, we're kind of changing colors gradually. That's called a gradient, okay? So I'm going to use that same aqua, but this time I'm going to lighten it up a little bit with some of our, ooh, that's a lot. <laughs> Definitely didn't need that much, but that's okay. Um, a little tiny, tiny touch. Now, if you put too much in there, it's gonna turn straight up green. A tiny touch of yellow with our aqua color. Tiny, tiny touch. All right, we're just gonna kind of blend it right in where we stopped with the other color. Go just along that edge, just kind of blending. Notice I'm still moving in that horizontal direction. That works very well with water. Makes it look more watery. Okay, so as we go with that gradient, that gradual change in color, we're gonna add a little bit more of that yellow. Don't forget the edge of your canvas there. I need a little bit more of my aqua color. So I'm just gonna grab a little of that. Sometimes when we're making these gradients, it helps to have A little bit of water on the brush just to help that paint mix together right there on the canvas. Now I'm going to take that same color and I'm just kind of streaking it up a little bit towards that dark blue. You see that? And with those horizontal stripes. There we go. And let's see, maybe I'll take a little white, lighten up that greenish tinted color with the yellow, and maybe add a few little 
horizontal lines in here. There we go. Beautiful. All right, so now we are going to take that gradient right back down to the aqua, but maybe just a little lighter this time. We'll add a little bit of white and kind of lighten it up because it's shallower here, right? So I'm just taking the aqua, adding some white in there, and that'll be our final color in our gradient for the ocean. Again, I'm gonna grab a little bit of water on my brush because it's getting a little difficult to maneuver around these edges. And there we go. Let's just take a little bit of darker aqua, maybe some of that blue too, and just give our final portion its little horizontal marks there. And we are pretty much done with the, well, come on. Couldn't seem to get that color dark enough. Pretty much done with the ocean part right there. Okay. And I'm just gonna soften that line just a little bit right there. Okay, look, it's coming along. All right, so next we are going to mix a sand color, which is super easy. All we'll need is a little bit of brown and our yellow and some white for this part. So let's start with mostly white. So we'll start with a little pile of white, just like that. And then I'm going to add some brown, just a tiny bit of brown, brown, just to get it tinted. Maybe a little more. Now you see how this could certainly work for sand, but to me that color is a little bit boring. It just looks like a light brown. So let's just add a touch. Check this out. Just a touch of yellow to that color and look how suddenly we have a much more interesting pretty maybe one tiny little touch again much prettier sand color because anytime we mix a sand color we want it to have a little bit of, of yellow tinge to it okay so guess what again we're going with that horizontal motion with our brush and just going back and forth and we're just going to fill the beach with that pretty sand color. Now when I get up to the water, we don't want a perfectly harsh line there, do we? So I'm just going to leave that be for a second. I've done one, one side over here. While I'm at it, I'm going to wash out my brush and just get a little bit of water on it, just a little bit. Use a paper towel to get some of it off or just dab it on your plate like I'm doing. And let's just blend up here. You see that? How we can just blend using a wet brush with no paint on it. Those two colors together to get the shoreline. Isn't that pretty? Okay, I went ahead and did that before it dried so that that's why I kind of did it on this side and now I'll do it on this side um, because I didn't want the paint to dry. Uh-oh, I've run out of my sand color so I'm going to quickly mix again. 
There we go. I love painting ocean scenes. To me, I don't know why, it's just so relaxing. Maybe it's all the, you know, large washes of color, maybe. Okay. I'm grab a tiny bit of water on my brush, pounce some of it out, and then we'll do some more of that blending of the shoreline. Very nice. Excellent. Look how far we've come already. Let's grab a little bit of white. We're going to do the same thing we did up here. I'm going to lighten my sand color with some white and just do some, maybe some little squiggly lines going across there. Make it, give it some depth and some texture. All right. Now we get to paint. At this point, really, you could paint any of the last three little objects in the foreground, the tree, the flamingo, or the grass over here. Um, let us go ahead and, I think I'm going to go ahead and do the tree since I still have, since I have a lot of the colors out that I'm going to need. So I just washed my brush off and dried it out a little bit. And we're going to go in with plain old brown on the tree trunk. We'll jazz it up in a second, but our base color is going to be brown. Now I'm finding that my brown is pretty transparent, which means it's see-through. It's kind of see-through. I don't like that, so what I'm probably going to do is get this one coat on there and then we'll do another coat after it dries. And luckily, acrylics don't take very long to dry. So, by the time we finish with the top of our tree, the palm fronds, we will be ready to do another coat of that brown. I keep forgetting to do the edges of my canvas. Some people don't do the edges. A lot of times I don't just because I forget as I'm going. Okay. Guess what? I've left out a little bit of the ocean there. No biggie. I'm just going to go back in. Nope, not with that because it's dried up. I just grabbed a little bit more aqua, a little bit of yellow, because that's that portion that we mixed yellow in there. Fill that in right there. Easy peasy. All right, back on track. Now what we want to do is mix a green. Our kit doesn't come with a green because it doesn't need to. We have yellow and blue, right, which make green. So. We are just going to mix some yellow and a touch, okay? Blue is a very pigmented, strong color with any kind of paint you're working with. So you want, anytime you're mixing a green, you want to start with yellow and just add little touches of blue until you're happy with it. So, so far we have like a lime green. I want it to be a little darker, so I'm going to grab more of my blue. Ah, that's more like it. That's a pretty green. Okay, so let's just fill in our palm leaves.
Look, I'm just using my finger to test it and it looks like that brown is pretty much dry. Just cleaning off my brush here. Let's do one more coat and that should do it. Yeah, much better. We're probably gonna have to do the same technique with the two coats um, on the flamingo because bright, bright colors like this bright pink we're going to use, they are notorious for being very transparent or see-through. All right, we'll do, we'll jazz that tree up a little bit more soon but let's let it dry for the time being and while we have our green here we'll go ahead and I'm gonna mix a little bit more yellow in there make it kind of a limey green color and let's fill in our grass over here and I'm just doing this super loosely I even grabbed a little bit of the darker green and kind of let that work its way in there. Okay. All right, now we are fun time. We are ready for our pink. Flamingo. Find a clean place on my palette there. Give myself some of this gorgeous bright pink. Okay, you may want to grab your skinny little brush in order to get into the neck part of the flamingo. Actually, rewind. Let me add a little bit of white in with this pink. Why do I keep giving myself giant piles of paint when I don't need it? All right, look how that works. We're going to put some white in with that fluorescent pink, and it's just going to make it a little softer. And what that's also going to do is make it more opaque, okay? Opaque is just the opposite of transparent makes it um, not so see-through. Let's try that again. Ooh, yes, I like that better. So just carefully follow that neck around. There we go. Take your time here. If you get to this point and you're a little tired of painting and it's making you rush through things, maybe you should take a break. And then come back to it and you'll be, um, you'll probably be, you know, better at working on the details and not rushing through them. Because we want to get the flamingo right since it's our main focus of the painting. All right. Okay. 
Now at this point, I'm kind of, I'm just going to keep my small brush and just keep brushing in the direction of the body. So kind of following that curve so that our brush strokes, if we were going down, it would look a little weird, but this way it almost looks like feathers, right? This is a little transparent up here, so let me just fill that in one more time, and looks pretty good. All right, while that's still wet, here's one of those little bonus um, opportunities I told you about earlier. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to grab some white and mix it into that same yellow so it just makes a lighter version of it, and I'm just going to give our Flamingo, a little bit of texture there. Won't we'll overdo it. I think that's good. Okie dokie. Now, I think I would like a darker pink on the legs. So I'm just going to go right into that. Maybe a, maybe a little bit of white because I do want it to be a little bit, I don't want it to be so transparent, um, but I want it to be darker, so I like that. It looks good. Again, using that small brush, work carefully here. This is still pretty transparent, so I'm going to go over this one more time once it dries. Oh, it's looking so cute. All right, we're almost there, guys. I'm going to take that same dark pink and fill in just the tip that curved edge of the beak. Maybe go in with some soup, almost perfectly white, maybe just a touch of pink in there and do the rest of the beak. I like it. And do some white on that eye area, just so it's not plain canvas right there. We'll go over that and give him a little black dot in his eye in a minute. But while we let the flamingo dry before we do anything else to it, let's go over here and do a few more details on the tree. I'm going to go back to the other side of my palette, grab some of this brown. Maybe add a little bit of white, touch of yellow again. Just kind of play with that. And just do maybe some highlights right here at the base of those little parts where the tree juts out a little bit. Because that's where it would really catch the light, right? It'll make it look more shadowed underneath, which is perfect. I like that. Okay, let's add some more details to our palm leaves. Spin that palette around. Let's get some more green going on here. But this time, I want it to be much darker. So I'm starting with the blue and adding just a touch of yellow. And let's just add some kind of leafy type stripes going down there. There we go. Now let's put some, now that's a, kind of a low light, let's put some highlights on that, those leaves with some, some more yellow in that mix. 
yeah. Anytime you want to give something some more depth or texture, go in with a little darker color and then go in with a little bit of lighter color. That way you have some shadowing and some highlights. Okay, I think we're ready to outline. If you'll notice in the sample here, we have some black outlining. Now, um, I'm going to be using my little brush. Feel free though to use a black Sharpie marker if you don't feel comfortable using your brush. Or of course, you could just leave it this way and um, that would be fine too. Because she's looking pretty good so far, even just as she is. So of course we're going to grab our black, our small brush, and let's just get a little bit of practice here on the tree before we go straight into using, doing the uh, outline on the bird. So notice, I'm not doing a perfect outline all the way across all of the edges. I'm just kind of doing a very kind of wispy look, okay? It's not perfect and there are some edges that still aren't outlined and I like that. It keeps it from looking like a coloring book where you just kind of colored in the shapes. See that? Easy, easy. While I have this black out, let me grab some brown. This is one of those bonus things here. Not necessary, but fun. We're going to add a little bit of dark brown. I mix some brown with my black, and then I'm just going to go shoot like that. Shoot. <laughs> I like making little, little sound effects to show my students exactly what I mean. So we're going to start here again, just with the brush, and go shoot, just like that. Just kind of flicking it down. Oh, let's not forget down here, up here, we're going to go straight down. And see how that's just giving us even more of a shadow. Okay. Cleaning off that brown really good because we're about to go in there and do the bird. We're going to do our outline of the bird. Remember, we're just doing a very almost rough outline. I'm going in with just the very, very tip of my brush. You can even kind of wipe off some of that paint so it's not so thick on that tip. That helps. Now down here on the tail, I really am going to get pretty wispy and rough with that outline so it looks more like feathers. There we go. Let's go ahead and outline, oh goodness, I'm using the very, very tip of my brush there. Barely even touching the canvas. Now I'm gonna flip my brush and use the back end of it in the black in order to make the dot for the eye. See how that allowed me to get just in there enough to make that little dot. And then flip it back over and we'll finish around the beak. And 
There we go. I think flamingos even have a dark little piece on the end of their beak, so maybe I'll do that. Awesome. Okay, let's get those legs outlined. All right. Maybe just a little bit on the grass there. And voila. Okay, now that we have our dark outline, let's go in at the end of a painting. I always like to go in with some pure white and do some highlights. It just seems to make everything um, come together. Oops, hold on. Rewind. Let me go in with a little bit of black here. I forgot. We need a, a uh, wing, I guess you'd call it there. Before we go in the white, I'm going to grab a little bit of that really, that, that pink straight from the tube, as I call it. It's not mixed with anything. Maybe go in and do, I just felt like it needed something. Okay, much better. Now I'm ready to go in with the white. Okay, let's give our ocean a little bit of kind of white caps there. Now, we're in the back part of the ocean, right? The furthest away from us, I guess you would say. So these waves are gonna be thinner, smaller, maybe even, you know, more transparent. And then as we get closer, we can get thicker. And look, I have hardly any white on my brush so that it's almost kind of see-through. But as I get closer, I am getting more, um, I guess the, my, my lines are getting thicker and longer. Now here is another little fun thing that you can do. I'm taking my brush and I have white on it, but it's not, not very much white. Okay, I've kind of wiped much, a lot of it off. So you can go along here, and this is called scumbling, okay? You have almost uh, hardly any paint on, and you're just roughly rubbing the canvas, okay? It's called scumbling, and it's a lot of fun. Don't worry, you're not going to mess anything up, even if you get too heavy-handed with it. You can go back with your sand color and try to try again. So this just kind of gives it a sea foamy, you know, bubbly look right there on the shore. Very cute. Okay. Let's give a few little, put some highlights here. Just where that sun would naturally reach. Maybe a few right on the tips of where the sun would. I got a little heavy handed with it up here. Maybe shouldn't have done that much, but it's okay. And of course, let's not forget our beautiful hot pink flamingo here. I'm going to put some pure white right over that wing. 
maybe along the top edge of the head and neck. She's so pretty. Maybe even a little tiny bit right there on the top edge of her, his or her, I guess, legs. All right, and I think we are done. Okay. All right, guys, thanks again for painting with me. It was a lot of fun, as usual. Y'all head on over to rainbowfactory.com so you can grab another kit, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.